Hello and welcome to a new episode of the Blender Developer Sneak Peek. It's the 11th this time. My name is Thomas Beck and today we'll look at six brand new features in Blender Trunk. The new handles for color ramps, the plane tracks can now be hidden, the new mask handle types, a Bevel factor mapping improvement, the cycles mesh deformation and curve deformation motion blur, and the cycles smoke and fire support yeah we got fire and smoke support initially in cycles on cpu and um, that will be improved much more later on but it's so awesome i have to show it to you so there's a lot to see let's start the first thing i'd like to show you is the new color ramps the color ramp handles to be more specific those three handles here were never shown before normally we had only this thin line here and that was pretty hard to select this line here and um, with the new planner we'll have some uh, handles now that make it easier to select in the first row and that show this color uh, the, this uh, color at this position with this small rectangle so that will be much better and much easier to select let me increase the size a bit so all of you can see that flawlessly and um, that is really a welcome addition from charlie jolly and campbell so thanks for that the next thing i have to show you is in the movie clip editor located it's um, to, uh, the functionality to hide the plane track so when you got a plane track here like i have here then you can hide it with H, just hit H on the keyboard. And if you are hitting Alt and H, then it's showing up again. And by the way, this is a reel from a very cool f uh, studio, Ofni VFX, I hope I pronounced it right, that is making many things with Blender and they created a very cool reel and in this reel, there is this sequence that I abused for this demo. So sorry for that, but definitely check out the uh, studio. It's really cool. So that is the first thing. And the second thing is to uh, insert a new mask like this. And then you'll see immediately, hey, they were differently formed before and you're right that is pretty awkward but when you are hitting v now on the keyboard then you are presented a handle type field and with this handle type you could for example say okay let all those handles be aligned and then you could easily use them as you would use them in the f curve editor so you're now able to select three handles and change them for whatever you like like a line single single that is like it was before or auto auto that is doing something like this so you got the same possibilities like in the f curves and that helps especially when you uh, need more details in one position and less details and in other positions so that is really cool and a welcomed addition from sergey the next feature i'd like to show you is located in the object data when you select the curve it's the um it's the bevel factor here and previously we only had a start and end and for all of you that don't know this feature just uh, select the curve like this e here then uh, and insert another busy circle or something else like uh, because you're using it as a profile later on and then uh, enter this this object in this box just enter it there and it will immediately um surround the curve like this and when you are increasing or decreasing this 
original object, then the uh, surroundings are getting bigger or smaller. And when you are using the start and end value, then you could easily uh, dissolve this curve or let it um, appear. So that is the basic functionality and resolution that uh, this option that is selected here was available before automatically. So we didn't have to uh, check that. But with this new version, we got several new features like spline or segments. And I would like to show you first what the problem with resolution was. When you are animating this, then you're seeing at the E, especially in this part, that it's very fast, very slow at the beginning, and then very fast. Even though I set the interpolation type from this F curve to linear, so we shouldn't have we should have a linear progression. But that is uh, due to the segments, to the resolution that these, this curve has. And when you decrease the resolution, then you'll see it even better. So let me decrease it like this. And then you'll see, okay, all these segments, the preview resolution are until then. And then it is very fast. So there is a new spline option now. And with this spline option, it's possible to make it even like this. And that is very cool when you got hand type, ha handwriting or other uh, types of curves that you like to animate. And I would definitely uh, vote for checking this, this out. The other option that is here, the um, segments option, is a bit buggy at the moment, so I won't tell you how to use that. But basically, it's like um, it's mapping the BVL factor to the length of a segment and to the number of subdivisions of this segment. And that should work flawlessly too, but there it is a bit buggy at the moment. So let's just progress to the next feature, and that is Cycles Mesh Deformation and Curve Deformation Motion Blur. Deformation motion blur is very easy, like you got a shape key on this cube that is doing something like this, nothing fancy. And yet now let's look at what Cycles is doing when I'm disabling the motion blur. Then it's just rendering it as it is. But when I enable motion blur like this, then it's um, blurring the edges here. So that is a really cool option that is making it more realistic for all kinds of stuff. And when you got he, the, um, the uh, some options that won't get some motion blur, that you don't like to have some motion blur, then just use this checkbox here and this checkbox here, or increase the quality of the motion blur by increasing the number of steps. So it's very easy, very straightforward. And now let's come to the killer feature for this 2.71 series, the Cycles Smoke. To demonstrate this feature, I'm using a blend file from Precht who committed this feature. And um, as you can see here in the node tree, it's a fairly big tree for a simple material, but that will change in the future for sure. We will have a node material that we will and uh, insert via uh, node, add, shader, and then fire or smoke node or something like that. But for now, it's like this. And when we are using the smoke simulator, then we would go for it like with the Blender internal. So just uh, uh, enter, uh, insert a, a domain, then a smoke object, and hit Alt A to start the simulation. And when you then switch to the render viewport, then you can see it's rendered with cycles, like you see here. We got um, the CPU device as the renderer. The GPU won't work at the moment, but um, it's working and that is our initial uh, smoke support. So 
there is much to cover for the next sneak peeks, I think. I hope that you enjoyed this sneak peek. Please add us on Twitter, on Vimeo, on Facebook or on Google+. And keep on blending and we'll see us next time. Bye!